Recording in progress. The usual norm is to not judge a person by his face. But today, we'll see why it is important to judge a fetus by its face and multiple genotypes of a phenotype. I am Anjali Bhoyer from Set GS Medical College and KM Hospital. A 30-year-old Gravida 2 Para 1 lady with third degree consanguineous marriage presented at 23 weeks of gestation for a routine anomaly scan. She has a two and a half year old daughter who is developmentally normal. She has no relevant medical obstetric or family history. There was no history of warfarin exposure, alcohol abuse or vitamin K deficiency during her pregnancy. The ultrasonogram was performed in, the, uh, in this lady. The sagittal section of the fetal face at 23 weeks of gestation shows an abnormal profile with verticalized nasal bone increased frontonasal angle and relative prognathism. The 3D surface rendering ultrasound view of the fetal face shows flat mid face. Ossification is seen in the sacral vertebrae in the fetus. Normally, only the S1 and S2 vertebrae are expected to be ossified at 23 weeks of gestation. The image on your right shows ossi premature ossification of the cossacks. The cossacks normally does not ossify till term. The image on, on your left shows simple femoral head epiphysis. And the image on your right shows the foot of the fetus with ossified talus, calcaneum and cuboid at 23 weeks of gestation. A photograph of the abortus taken with parents' proper consent confirmed binders faces. These are the radiographs of the abortus which show calcific stippling in the proximal femoral epiphysis, ossified talus, calcaneum and cuboid. The right lateral radiograph of the fetus shows verticalized nasal bone, maxillary hypoplasia and ossified S1 to S5 vertebrae. These are the zoomed radiographs which show verticalized nasal bone with increased front frontonasal angle, the uh, stippling of the cervical vertebrae, the stippling of fe proximal femoral epiphysis, and premature ossification of the ankle bones. The diagnosis was chondrodysplasia punctata with binder species. Identifying a normal fetal profile by ultrasound during second trimester screening is important in the exclusion of facial anomalies. This is a case of chondrodysplasia punctata with binder's facies diagnosed at 23 weeks of gestation. In our case, the fetal nose was flat with long bones and vertebrae showing stippled epiphysis. There was premature ossification in the lumbar vertebrae, cossix, and ankle, ankle bones, suggestive of chondrodysplasia punctata. Chondrodysplasia punctata is a spectrum of skeletal dysplasias characterized by punctate calcification in the cartilage, known as calcific stippling. In some cases, there might be short limb dwarfism, spinal anomalies, facial dysmorphisms, joint contractures, skin lesions, and even heart defects. Premature calcification in the joints and shortening of the appendicular bone is also seen. Chondrodysplasia punctata presents in a variety of forms and exhibits significant locus and allelic variation. Binder's facies. Sir Binder in 1962 described a condition known as maxillofacial dysostosis, characterized by a short nose, flat nasal bridge with a short columella, acute nasolabial angle, convex upper lip, high ash palate, and dental malocclusions. A low flat nasal bridge is associated with more than 50 neonatal syndromes. The parents in this case had a familial profile that was not consistent with expected phenotype and findings on ultrasound. Hence, they requested for medical termination of pregnancy. The karyotype of the abortus was normal. This is how we calculate the frontonasal angle. A line is drawn parallel to the frontal bone and another line is drawn along the nasal bone and the angle between them is the nasofrontal angle. The nasofrontal angle from 14 weeks to 39 weeks of gestation is normally 126 plus minus 7 degrees. 
and we call it as what and we call the nasal bone as verticalized if it, it ranges from 135 to 162 degrees binder feces can be as isolated or associated with multiple etiologies some of them are as follows isolated binder type nasomaxillary dysplasia which can be autosomal dominant or autosomal recessive then second is chondrodysplasia dysplasia punctata which may be x linked or rhizomelic type X-linked chondrodysplasia punctata is characterized by scoliosis and asymmetrical shortening of the limbs. Rhizomelic type is characterized by epiphyseal shipling, talips, and short limbs. Phenytoin or Warfarin exposure can be characterized by mild shipling. Robino syndrome presents with mesomalia, clinodactyly, and macrocephaly. Arxox syndrome presents with brachydactyly and clinodactyly. Cruzon or upper syndrome present with craniosynostosis and achondroplasia presents with short tubular bones and megalocephaly. Etiologies of chondrodysplasia punctata. There are four main classes in which we can describe the etiologies. First is paroxysmal and lysosomal storage diseases, which include rhizomelic chondrodysplasia punctata, which is autosomal recessive and characterized by generalized shipling. Another cause is Gelweger syndrome, characterized by peripatellar stippling, and gangliocidosis and galactosidosis. The cholesterol biosynthesis disorders include CDPX2, Conradi Hunerman syndrome, which is X-linked dominant and is characterized by sensory neural hearing loss. There is Greenberg dysplasia and Smith Lemley Opet syndrome. Chromosomal Anomalies resulting in chondrodysplasia punctata are trisomy 13, trisomy 21, and Turner syndrome. Uh, disrupted vitamin K metabolism may also result in chondrodysplasia punctata, and the causes are autoimmune diseases like SLE, mixed connective tissue disorders, and scleroderma. Exposure to warfarin, phenytoin, alcohol, rubella, hypoplastic nail, maternal vitamin K deficiency, and brachytelephalangic chondrodysplasia uh, punctata X1 and cutal syndrome. Pathogenesis of chondrodysplasia uh, is that there is fragmentation of epiphysis of the long bones due to mucoid, mucoid degeneration. There is a, and these fragments undergo ossification, giving stippled appearance. These uh, punctate foci of calcification disappear after first year of life, which makes it important to diagnose it early. The clinical perspective. In cases of chondrodysplasia punctata, the typical or usual clinical presentation is that antenatally, the mother, mothers are asymptomatic and have no risk factors or comorbidities. Some of them might give positive family history. The clinical problem and need for imaging are that in antenatal, ultras, antenatal ultrasound plays a very important role in identifying nasomaxillary hypoplasia and epiphyseal stippling. Some types of chondrodysplasia punctata manifest with intellectual delay, hearing loss, and spinal abnormalities resulting in poor quality of life. Communicating the findings with obstetrician and mother helps them decide regarding further course of pregnancy. These are my references. Thank you.